Hello. Who's managing your career? Career can be a noun or a verb. If you think your manager is managing your career, think again. If you imagine just doing great work will boost your career, think again. If you feel the performance management system in your company or wherever you work is so aligned with how you're doing and things will naturally automatically follow through and help with your career, hmm, think again. So what makes career management challenging? What are some ways to lean in and proactively plan your career? Let's take a look at it through these different topics, which I call the six C's. We'll look at context, which are around myths. We'll see some challenges about technical roles, primarily uh, a topic that we want to focus our conversation around, which would be then again around growth and success and what it means. And the central part of today's theme and topic would be around four, which is around cultivating networks. And we will close with these interesting uh, paradigms that I can surface to you called ninjas, spiders, and forests. And you might be wondering what on earth those, do those things mean? And then, of course, we will have some time for clarifying some questions that might have come my way uh, as part of uh, you know, uh, helping prepare for this topic. Let's have a chat, shall we? First, let's talk about myths and paradigms about what career means and what career opportunities are. Now, the top portion of these slides are some of the common myths or popular myths that you might have heard of. The first one is about we have to strategize. We have to play the game in the, the locations that, where we work, play, and operate. But I'd love to tell you that it's not just about strategizing and playing the game anymore, but it's about understanding the culture and thriving in it. That is what is most important about building a career. The other myths that you would have heard and you would have seen, even if you go to your favorite search engine and type, it's always about ladders. Careers are about laddering up, following the crowd, but it's not. It's about climbing, yes, but climbing in all different ways and doing it in your way. That is what careers are all about. The third one, which is a very uh, even more common myth, is about Career is being a path. You always hear the term career path. There are specific milestones, there are pit stops, there are speed limits, and so on. But it's not. It is about setting course and navigating to your favorite destinations. Okay? So careers are about understanding the culture and thriving in it. It's about climbing and doing it your way. It's about setting course and navigating to your favorite destinations. Let's take a look at career growth. Some of the key paradigms about career growth are, it's all dependent on your manager or by managing up, okay? But it's not. It is eventually today's world about how your circle of influence, your peeps, your peers, your skips, your mentors know you, know the real you. That is how career growth happens. The second one, which is another common thing that I've heard um, among so many people that I talk to and mentor is about career growth is about doing a lot of things all the time. It's not. It is also by doing what you love. And it's not cliche to say it's what you love and loving what you do. But it's true. It's important. That is a central part of how career growth happens. You heard these other terms about career growth being navigating jungles, handling turbulence. Well, I'd love to tell you that it is back to fundamentals and foundations. It is about investing time, driving impact, and bringing people along. You might have heard these things many times before, but I'd urge you to reflect on these things. When you invest time, when you drive impact, and when you bring people along, career growth happens. Okay? Let's take a peek at, um, you know, I told you that we're going to talk more about technology and technology roles. Let's take a look at some of the challenges and all the different options by which career growth can happen within technology roles. Let's take a look at some of the roles. It's a very simplified view, uh, but provides um, an interesting perspective on how some of our roles can be applied. On the x-axis, you have technical skills. 
And obviously, all of us have some form of technical skills. It could be a practical skill all the way to an expert technical skill. And you can define what these terms mean, but you get the point, right? There is a gradation of different levels of technical skills that each one of us have. And on the y-axis, let's talk about product skills. Product is foundational and fundamental regardless of the type of roles that we all play in in the technology world. You can have an operational model of product or you can have a strategic thinking about what product management is. Okay, There is a z-axis, which is around domain skills. And we'll, we'll keep that as whatever the domains can be for now. And the, the four grids that emerge from um, a two by two like this uh, or on a graph like this is on the x-axis, you can be very strong in project process management and you can get into more and more engineering management based on growing on the x-axis. On the y-axis, you can still be project to project process management, which is very fun, fun, fundamental and foundational, and you can start getting really good at product management. But the place that I would like to focus our conversation on is this amazing space called technical program management or uh, product TPM as it's called in some companies. And that area is also a very interesting, fascinating uh, space because it blends process, product, and engineering management into one space for technical program management. So why am I talking about all these things to you? I wanted to give you a flavor, one framework about how we think about technical roles and how it can be applied to the type of career growth that we want. So let's take a peek at a few options for career growth, okay? So on the extreme left, you see that the same set of uh, four um, you know, boxes that we talked about before, and you can try that particular combination, go all around those particular roles, you can rinse and repeat, but then change it by domain. You could be in healthcare today, you could be in climate change tomorrow, you could be in any different forms of domain that you want, and you could try process, product, technical program management, engineering management that way. You can grow your career that way, okay? Boldly rotate roles across domains, the first one. The second option for career growth can be, how do you create, craft, and cultivate your brand? Who it is that you are? Who do you want to be? Now, when you take a look at the technical program management, an area that I specialize in and I, and I work um, a lot in, is you could be a fixer of things, you could be a builder, you could be a connector, or you could be a scaler. I could be great at scaling um, you know, large-scale systems. I could help fix things that are broken, or I could help create and build new things. So you find your brand, and you start developing your persona, and then you can have career growth that way. You can, you can change each of these particular roles, or you can go deep in any one particular role and become the best known scaler for technical program management. That's another way to grow your career. The last option, which I also wanted to surface with you, is breadth versus depth, single versus multiple. What does this really mean? Every one of us has a style. Every one of us has an intention of our repertoire. And so the goal is, how can we learn to be good at one and then perform and master and then get better at it over time or then switch over? So I can be a master of one program or I can take care of multiple programs that I want to run. I can go deep into one domain, one specific set of systems and keep you know, doing really great there or I can go um, you know, bread twice, okay? So technology roles and career options. So think about these as you're thinking about career growth as well, okay? So we talked a little bit about the myths and paradigms. We talked about the different uh, career options and so on. So now why don't we have a conversation about what growth means and what success uh, should be defined as or how should we think about it in that particular way? Now, what does growth mean? So let's take a parallel. I'm, I'm fascinated by, by trees and this whole notion about arboreal aspects, right? So what does a tree actually need for a tree to really grow? Like if we think of career growth in parallel um, you know, to how a tree grows, a tree or, or some kind of vegetation requires these three core engines, right? Core elements, sun, sunlight, water, and nutrients. That helps this arboreal nature of growth. So similarly, there is a very strong parallel to what happens at work. So you need three things. You need sponsors, somebody who knows the space and investing in it, somebody who knows you and investing in you. The spaces, the problem spaces that are very important, and that's a, that's a true form of nourishment that's required for, for us as humans, for us as individuals to operate in, and the necessary skills and attributes, just like nutrients, that are required for us to actually grow. So remember that. Sponsors, spaces, and skills are very important. Um, and you need to find uh, it through your mentoring circle, through your manager, uh, and through your own self-reflection on how you can develop and grow those. 
So what does success demand? It's a very complicated workplace today, as you know. We all have to deal with so many different aspects to it. But I hope this will give you um, a summarized or a TLDR view of what success means in today's workplace. So there are these bunch of boxes. Let's start from the first one where I have a star that says, know your potential. I think that's a very important thing. Um, there is a time and place for all of us to reflect and know who we are and what our potential is. Then you find your purpose. I think it's the second most important thing here. If you don't know what your purpose is, if you don't know how to seek it, then you can't develop your skills. And if you can't develop your skills, you can't infuse passion, which is very important. And once you know your potential purpose and your skills and your passion, then you can turbo boost, as I call your core, like your core performance. Once you do that, then the rest of the things will begin to follow more logically, where you will land impact. And you will not only grow yourself, but you will grow heroes around you, you know, people who will kind of rally with you. And that helps you build and cultivate your network. Okay? Once you cultivate your network, the next few things are very fascinating. You will find people starting to become very happy. You will start having a much more uh, cohesive um, you know, set of people around you. And then comes the time, a very important time of not being quite here when it comes to career growth, but being able to narrate your story or narrate the story that you've been able to create. And then you start again tracking and watching the trends. That's what I call friend the trends uh, aspect. So this is the cycle of what success demands in today's world. The more you do that, the more you um, consciously um, are aware of and take control of it, the better your performance will be. Okay? Know your potential, find your purpose, develop your skills, infuse your passion. So that's one phase. Once you do that, you can turbo boost your core, you land impact, you grow a group of people who are all going to be heroes. It forms your network. People are happy. Then you take time to tell the story about what actually happened. You go on to the next set of trends and off you go, um, you know, in, a, in a, what, what we would call a very successful uh, orientation. Okay. So let's take a look at this, the network part, which is uh, a, you know, another fascinating piece that I really wanted to talk to you about. So what does networks mean? All of us know this notion. Some of us go to business school and say, I got to develop my network. LinkedIn is a crazy place for developing networks, right? Crazy in a sense, in a positive way, and also in sometimes in an inorganic way that you want to build your networks. But what is it actually? Right? So let's take a peek at um, how we ship music. And then we see how we ship products. So let's, let's focus on the left side. Now, uh, for a successful production of a music album or a, or a performance, it requires an ecosystem of players that have to get involved in it. Right? You need to have a terrific orchestra. You need to have some engaged producers. You need to have some invested advisors. And then you have some passionate followers and you have some really, really fond fans of yours. In order for all these things to happen, then you ship a great label, okay? So this is a paramount importance. This is of paramount importance in order for this ecosystem to actually work. And that is the cultivation of the network a successful music producer or a successful album will have to do to ship music. Now let's take a look at it in the technology world of shipping products, because we are after all talking um, you know, in product school, and it's very important to know, are there parallels? And of course there are. Just take a look at how fascinatingly similar these things are. Now, if you want to ship a great product, right, you obviously need to have a great product team, and which, is, which is sort of an aspirational thing for a lot of us, is how do you become a great product manager? How do you become a very good at product sense? And you need to have invested sponsors. You need to have some engaged mentors, very similar to the advisors in the music side, right? And what about teammates? You have to have, and we depend on, uh, terrific uh, teammates and committed partners, right? Partners who all of us have to deal with either internally inside the company or outside. So a similar ecosystem is absolutely important in order to cultivate and create and ship products. Okay. So just as if uh, we ship music, it's equally uh, important how we think about shipping products as well. So let's conclude. I told you that we're going to talk about some fun things about warriors and spiders and my core um, forests. <clears throat> our career is determined by these three things. Remember, we started our conversation uh, of this presentation today that our managers are the ones that determine your careers. The answer is yes, but managers are coaches. And remember what coaches are and who they are. They're extremely important people in our lives. They see in us what we can't see ourselves, right? 
And this is exactly uh, a quote from Pep, who, uh, if you're um, a football fan, a Man City coach who talks about it that way. But what is more important than managers are to be on a great team, whatever the team means to you. Because as you know, a great team achieves more and more boosts camaraderie. And that's a very, very important part of how careers are determined today. So it's not just about managers who are about coaches, but being on a great team. So you have to be on teams like Man City. It's not just be, it's not just by having Pep as your manager, but by being on a, on a part of a great team. The second one is, are careers determined? We, we asked this question just by great work. Absolutely, yes. There is no substitute to hard work. You know, as Edison would have, uh, you know, talked about, and some of you might have known the quote. But also, we have to make sure that we all have that purpose, that passion, that we skill it with, and then we bring it home with solid performance. So purpose, passion, and performance is as important um, in addition to just hard work. Okay? Performance review systems. Every one of us has it in every single company that we work for. Yes, as Drucker said, the famous management thinker, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Right? So there has to be a way that we have to work within the performance management system for careers. However, what is more important, as I called out very early in the presentation, was understanding the culture, knowing what actually matters, and making sure that the key metrics in that culture that you work with, in the, in the realm of the project and the impact that you actually do, how it actually matters, how it actually matters to move those metrics. Okay, so managers plus team, hard work plus passion, purpose, and performance. Yes, performance review system, but also understanding the culture, knowing what to shift and how it moves the metrics. Okay, so if you have to still want some simplified view about thinking about career management, think about these next three things that I'm going to give you, I'll leave behind. One, don't think about career ladders anymore. It's, it's ancient, okay? It is about, you know, ninja warriors. It's about zip lines. It's about being in these, zip, in these gyms. It's about all forms of growth can happen. It's no longer just laddering up or down, okay? Next, do not think about isolated actions. So just as if you're working on individual work, an independent affiliation with a manager is not the solution anymore, right? You have to build and work over time with a pod of people, with a network of peers, mentors, well-wishers, or even your family. And that is when the network will work for you, okay? So don't think about yourself as an individual entity trying an individual relationship with somebody, but it is about a microcosm of people that you would have to go along with. The third, Try please not just being the tree. It's no longer important to become the best tree that you ever can, or the stronger tree, the taller tree, or the most powerful tree. But you have to become integral to what is called the mycorrhizal forest. A mycorrhizal forest is a fascinating place because it is how all the trees communicate with each other. Trees talk to each other. Trees warn each other in times of distress, and trees nourish each other and provide signals. And so mycorrhizal is a type of fungi that is known to communicate with each other. I'm just drawing analogy or parallels to it because that is what career growth happens. So don't think about just being a tree, but think about helping your forest develop and your forest become as successful as yourself. And that is when, you know, true uh, things happen. So if you like so far um, uh, on what we talked about and you're wondering who <laughs> on earth am I? So my name is Kaushik. Uh, Kaushik Seturaman, and that's my LinkedIn profile. Uh, I am a, a technical program manager at Meta, formerly known as Facebook. And uh, if you like um, what you do, I'd love for you to, you know, consider, um, you know, talking to me and talking to us as a company. And uh, some of the roles that we have on our team are called the technical program management roles or technical product management roles. So feel free to give us a, you know, shout out or take a look at us. Uh, last but not least, uh, I'm sure there are a bunch of uh, questions and answers that you all might have. If you have questions about these topics discussed today, uh, ping me on LinkedIn or other channels. I'd be happy to answer those. If you, again, to reiterate, if you, if you liked what you learned today and you have an interest in technical roles at Meta, please do consider the um, you know, Meta TPM roles and other open positions. Or not just at Meta, but if these type of roles are of interest to you, I'm sure these things would be a fascinating place for you to look at in the industry. And Remember how we started this presentation. 
who's managing your career? Well, by now you perhaps arrived at this insight. It's you. You manage your career. Remember, it is after all your tree, it's your forest, and it's your career. Our tiny Quercus rubus sapling that you saw has now grown into a full, big, large, strong oak tree. And if you remember, our oak tree now nourishes the mycorrhizal forest that it now lives in. Thank you.